So this is our HAS 200 lab, our highly automated systems lab. And this lab is where we primarily learn about taking a set of inputs and a set of outputs, programming a module in between and getting them to interact in a way that accomplishes what we need it to. And the reason we spend so much time on these systems is because we want students to be able to approach a wind turbine, a solar array, or a hydroelectric dam the same way, and that each of them has a very vast array of inputs a vast array of outputs and a programmable logic controller in the middle. Uh, this system is uh, fairly unique in that it's one of three operating systems on the West Coast. Uh, there are only three of them out there. We get to have one of them, which I think is really exciting because um, our school isn't a very huge school. And so to have access to a system like this is a huge benefit for all of our students. What I like about this system is that it's modern. So when we're teaching students how to use it, we're not teaching them on something that's outdated or uh, that they're not going to run into. This is exactly what they are going to encounter out in the field. Here we are in our digital electronics lab where second year students apply the technology they learned in the first year to real world applications and projects. Adjacent to our digital electronics lab is this computer lab. Students can practice computer simulations of electrical circuits. They can build them on the computer, and they can also do their homework in here. Different tutors are available at different times to assist students with any of the projects they're working on or any homework questions that they have. So this is our LabVolt electromechanical systems lab, where students can come in and conduct experiments on power generation, distribution, and usage. They can take each station, they can customize it to whatever they need to use using all the different modules that we have around the room, and they can slide those into place, wire them up, and conduct the experiments like what these guys are doing over here. So they're learning techniques on balancing their loads using capacitive reactants and inductive reactants so that they're getting the most efficient usage of the energy that's being produced. Here we are at our vertical axis turbine what we've affectionately dubbed as our urban turbine. It is a upright unit, a little different than what we're used to seeing sometimes going down the highway of the three blade turbines that are out on the big wind areas. This one is compact, it has a generator built into the base, and it is able to provide power to an adjacent building here, and we supplement our power usage by this turbine. This is capable of working in very low wind speeds and also in multi-directional winds so it can take wind from any direction and produce power. So here we are in Bailey Hall where we focus on hydraulics, mechanics, teamwork and safety. As you can see these students are putting together hydraulic systems the, where they use a valve to control the cylinders. This is to teach them the skills of troubleshooting and maintenance because hydraulic systems by nature are high maintenance. Later on in the course, we take them over to the Vestas V27 turbine and they spend weeks planning and then taking down the turbine and putting it back up together again. As you can see, all around the room, there are several different tools. We teach them proficiency with these tools. They te we teach them how to use them safely and effectively. And finally, throughout the whole thing, we had to teach them safety and we teach them teamwork because in a turbine, the two primary things that they need to focus on is keeping themselves safe and keeping their partners safe.